Happy Sabbath and welcome back to our online youth conference. I hope that your morning thus far has been blessed. Our conference started last night and I would like to take a moment to reintroduce the theme. Today is the day of salvation. Last night we were privileged to listen to Brother Rado Ionita who gave us the presentation titled You are a princess and a prince. I believe that those who joined us last night learned a lot from the presentation and I'm sure we're going to learn much more with the coming presentations. At this time, I would like to invite us to have a word of prayer. Our kind and heavenly Father, we humble ourselves this morning as we bow before your throne of grace. We thank you this morning for the gift of life, for we know that morning has broken and yet quite a number of people have not been able to see the light of day. We thank you for our families that you have given us so that we may be able to constitute your church, the society, our nations, the world over. Not only that we may be dwell in comfort and in sin on earth, but that our families may be beacons of hope and light and draw people closer to you. We equally thank you for the spiritual home that you've given us in the form of the church, where our covenants, our hopes, our strength may be renewed as we hear your word and be able to draw closer to you. We pray this morning for the forgiveness of our sins so that they may not impede our prayers as we bring our petitions and requests through prayer. We pray this morning, as we're going to hear the word from your servant, that the Holy Spirit may be able to prepare a fertile ground in our hearts, that the word spoken may sprout as the seed and be able to bear fruit, so that after we've heard the word, we're able to go out, diffuse the light, be able to spread the message of hope, not only the message of hope in terms of temporal things, but most chiefly the message of hope in your Son, Jesus Christ, as the soon coming King. We also pray that as the Sabbath day proceeds and comes to the end, the fair share that of blessings that you've prepared for us may be given to us and may you be able to receive that. We ask and pray for all of this in the wonderful and mighty name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. This morning we are blessed to have another presentation with the title, You Are the Present and the Future. To preface this presentation, I'd like to invite us to turn our Bibles to Psalms 25 verse 5. Psalms 25 verse 5. It says, Lead me in thy truth and teach me for thou art the God of my salvation. On thee do I wait all the day. Amen. Here David is trying to remind us that we need guidance from the Lord. As young people, children, as well as adults, we need to go to the Lord to find the truth which can assist us in finding the way that we need to go. Today we are going to be blessed with a presentation, You are the present and the future, with a thought Find your purpose today. Our presenter is Brother Adrian Finaro, and I pray that God will richly bless you and I as we are going to listen to this wonderful message. At this time, we are going to have special music and thereafter start the presentation.
Hello, my dear friends. It's a privilege to be able to share a few thoughts from the Word of God with you today. I am really happy that the Lord has blessed me with the privilege to know so many young people uh, with a lot of potential, with a lot of talents, and especially with a purpose. Today, we are going to talk about you are the present and the future. Find your purpose today. It's interesting that many times I come across young people and um, they all believe that they are the future. They all look forward to what the Lord has in store for them for the near or the long future. And very few of them are actually thinking about what God has in store for them today. And I also heard many parents say to their children, you are the future. I heard pastors telling the young people, you are the future. Well, today we are going to assure you that you are not only the future, you are actually the present. So I invite you wholeheartedly to find your purpose today. I would like us to consider a few examples from the Bible and I would like to say that there are two categories of young people today. One of them is that some of the young people are born in favorable conditions which facilitate the fulfillment of God's purpose in their lives. And there is another category of other young people who are born in unfavorable conditions which do not facilitate the fulfillment of God's purpose in their lives. And in the Bible we have these two categories and we may, if we have time, mention one more category. In the Bible there are, like I said, many examples which speak about young people who have devoted their lives to God and to his service they found their purpose but not for all of them was easy and one of the examples that I would like to use is Jeremiah Jeremiah is one of these young people who have found out what their purpose was at a very early age in their lives Jeremiah is one of the young people who is part of the first category of those who have been born in favorable conditions for their growth and for the fulfillment of God's purpose in their lives. Jeremiah was actually born in a traditional family of priests. And what other environment would you want to have in order for you to fulfill your missionary purpose, missionary potential, than in a priesthood family, in a family of ministers, in a family of pastors, in a family of evangelists, in a family of missionaries. There is no better place to be in, right? It doesn't mean that that's the only place you are supposed to be born in order for you to reach your potential. So we will see what God has for us today as far as the example of Jeremiah is concerned. In Jeremiah chapter 1, verse 5, God is informing Jeremiah of his purpose. And he says like this, before I formed thee in the belly, I knew thee. And before thou camest forth out of the womb, I sanctified thee. And I ordained thee to be a prophet to the nations. Jeremiah was very young. We don't know exactly how old he was. But God came to him and revealed to him the purpose God had with him before he was even born. God revealed to him that before he was even conceived in the belly, he had been ordained for a purpose. And this is very interesting because, you know, it's difficult to find your purpose. Imagine if your purpose had been established before you were born, how much harder that um, weighs on your shoulders finding out what your purpose was before you were born. 
And I wonder if anybody, any young person would think that Jeremiah is an exception to the rules. Jeremiah might be the only young person who knew what he was supposed to be at a very young age. Jeremiah is the only one who was actually ordained by God for a specific purpose before he was even born. I dare believe that actually all of us are born with a purpose. I believe that God has a plan with each and every one of you and a very detailed plan, just like, like in the case of Jeremiah. Jeremiah was called by God when he was very young. Of course, his response uh, was not surprising by a young person. He actually looked for excuses when God called him and said, Lord, you know, I, I have a problem. I, I'm very young. Do you mean that I have to follow my purpose already? Or do I have to wait to grow up and, uh, you know, uh, first look for other ways for me to spend my time, look for other uh, professions that I may be interested in? And then if I don't find any other uh, profession that it's interesting enough for me, then I will accept your call. Well, Jeremiah said, I am very young. And in the end, he became a prophet. He became a very important prophet, by the way. He was persecuted by his own people that he was uh, preaching to. And one day, after so much suffering, he said, I'm going to give up. I cannot preach to these people anymore. They don't listen anyway. I wasted my youth in working for them trying to rescue them from, from sin, to help them come out of their situation. And they keep treating me so badly. I'm not going to preach anymore. Then very short while later, he actually said, I cannot, I, I cannot just hold my peace. Um, the word of the Lord is like a fire within my bones. I have to preach. So he went back to preaching in spite of the fact that he felt like giving up. And this is what happens when you understand that God has called you for a purpose. You are going to follow your purpose no matter what. And in the case of Jeremiah, he did a great job. And we keep reading about the wonderful work he has done and how God has blessed him. So the question is, what do you think about your life? Do you have a purpose? Do you believe you were born in this world with a purpose? Well, I believe everybody is. Everybody is born with a purpose. And um, when you get to live up to that purpose, when you get to live up to the potential God has for you, you are going to be very happy. And no matter what you go through, you will want to fulfill your purpose, whether hard or easy you will follow that purpose it is very important for you to find out today what your purpose is in my experience i always share this experience because it's very dear to my heart i didn't know as a young person god has a purpose with me a specific purpose so when when i was six years old it was the first time i felt the need of a change in my life. And, and that is not because I was a good person. It is because I was naturally inclined to doing evil things. And I remember that uh, every time summer came, summer vacation came, we were getting ready to visit our grandparents. And all our cousins were coming for summer. And my grandparents were very happy that the uh, grandchildren were coming except for one grandchild and that was me every time they knew i was going they were you know concerned that i was going to damage their reputation in the neighborhood and that's how it was every time i was going there every time i would go out of the yard and uh, somebody would come to complain about something i had done and um, one day I, I remember my grandparents asked me, why can't you be like everybody else? So when I was six years old, I thought, wow, I'm making everybody sad. Probably I should change. Probably I should be better. But you see, 
I believe this thought came from God. He was telling me just like he was telling Jeremiah, Adrian, I have chosen you for a purpose. I have selected you for a special work, but I didn't have the necessary support that I needed in order for me to follow God's plan. So as a child, I forgot about it or I just continued my life as I thought it was normal to be. And 12 years later, when I was 18, I had gotten in so much trouble that I couldn't sleep at night. I was so concerned about my life and about how everybody was predicting that my life was going to be a ruin. Teachers, my parents even, were saying that I would end my life in prison. So 12 years later, I was in real trouble. I couldn't sleep at night. And one night at two o'clock in the morning, I thought about an experience I had when I was six years old. Remember, the same vacation, the same summer that I thought I needed a change, the same days, the, the same week, let's say, that I thought of needing to be a better person, God also gave my family the means by which I could become better. My grandparents gifted my parents a small Bible. And I remember as if it were yesterday that we were walking towards the train station. It was a long way. And my parents remembered they had forgotten the Bible. And they asked me to run back to the house to get the Bible and catch up with them on the way to the train station. So I ran to the house. I got the Bible and I remember my grandparents said, hide it beneath your jacket so nobody can see you have a Bible. Because back then in my country, you could not have a Bible. It was illegal to hold the Bible. So I caught up with my parents and then 12 years later, when I was in my bed, concerned about my future, a thought came to me that I should look for the Bible that I hadn't seen too often for the 12 years. So I went out of my bed I looked for the Bible because probably somebody told me once that the Bible can change lives. There was something there in the back of my head that made me look for the Bible. So I went, looked for the Bible. I found it somewhere behind other books and I started reading. And this is how God started changing my life. Turn it around so he could fulfill the purpose he had with me. And I remember I started reading and I tried to go on with my life, but my life was changing without me noticing. I was trying to go on with the routine of my life and I couldn't anymore. When I would go back to the disco bar, for example, I would just sit there and look and wondering if that was how I looked like when I danced. So the Lord was changing my life. He wanted to fulfill His purpose in my life. And a drastic change needed to take place in order for God's potential for me to really be reached. Well, the rest is history, right? How God has helped me understand a little bit of the Bible, how God has sent the right people in my life to explain the Bible, how God has prepared the way for me to become a missionary. And I couldn't be happier. I, I cannot say that I could, I could have chosen a different path that could have made me happier. Jeremiah was called by God 
to be a prophet. I believe I was called by God to be a missionary. What do you believe God has called you to do? You know, when I got to know the church, when I got to hear the stories about how our brethren went out to preach the gospel in my town, how they went from house to house to give books away, because this is how they found me, actually. They came to my door. So when I got to know the story of how they came and how they started the work in my city, I realized that God had had a plan for me before I was born. Our brethren actually indirectly told me that they had been praying for me for 30 years. 30 years. That means they had been praying for 12 years before I was born and 18 more years after I was born because I was 18 when I decided to give my heart to the Lord. They were praying. Since the moment they started the business in my town, they were praying that at least one person would be converted in my town. There was no church in my town. And they had been praying for 30 years. And then God touched my heart. He sent the right people to my door at about the same time. And he created the right environment for me so I can get ready to fulfill my purpose. So my question for you is, have you ever meditated on what the profound purpose might be for your life? What is God's plan for you today? Well, if you pray about it, God is going to reveal it to you. It doesn't matter what circumstances you are born in. Maybe you are a Jeremiah, born in a pastor's family. God has a purpose for you. And you have all the tools you need in order for you to get to fulfill that purpose. So today, we are going to consider another example in the same category of people who are born in a positive environment that facilitates the fulfillment of God's purpose in their lives. And this second example that I want us to consider is Samson. Samson was born in a Jewish family, in a religious family, in an influential family, a family or parents that were very dedicated to God. That's a good environment to be born in. To be born in a Christian family is a great privilege because you will be exposed to the Word of God since you are very small, very young. You memorize the Bible when you are very young. You have all the basics that somebody needs to grow in grace. It is a privilege to be born in, the Christ in a Christian family. In Judges chapter 13, verse 1, the Bible is telling us what circumstances Samson was born in, not as far as family is concerned, but as far as God's people's situation was. So it says here, And the children of Israel did evil against, again in the sight of the Lord, and the Lord delivered them into the hand of the Philistines forty years. So this was the situation of God's people at that time. There was a situation of apostasy. Because of the apostasy within God's people, they had been dominated, ruled over by the Philistines. But there were families within God's people who are very dedicated. And one of the families was the parents of Samson. In Judges 13, 5, he says, For lo, thou shalt conceive and bear a son, and no razor shall come on his head, for the child shall be a Nazarite unto God from the womb, and he shall begin to deliver Israel out of the hand of the Philistines. 
it is important for us to remember that this faith faithful family was praying. They were suffering because of the situation of God's people. And they were wondering whether somebody would come to deliver them. Well, the, these years of captivity were ending. And they needed somebody to come and deliver them. And of course, God could have delivered them one way or another. But he chose to use a young man, just like yourself, to do this wonderful job. And it says here, uh, just like in the case of Jeremiah, it says here that Samson was chosen by God before he was born to do this kind of work. Again, God has a purpose for each and every one of us from before we are born. We need to understand the importance of preparing our hearts and our young people to fulfill their purpose. The best conditions for our young people have to be prepared, have to be cultivated so that they can fulfill their purpose. In the case of Samson's parents, when they found out what a great work he was going to do, they were interested to know what they were supposed to do in order for the child to fulfill his purpose. They decided that they would want to prepare the way for the arrival of the baby so that he could actually be prepared to fulfill God's purpose. So they asked the Lord, Lord, what would you want us to do with our child? How would you like us to get ready to take care of the baby? How would you like us to take care of the baby? And the Lord gave them a specific plan, gave them uh, details about the diet, about how they were supposed to educate this child so he could fulfill his purpose. You know, in today's time, we consider the children, um, you know, some of them just come by accident or they just, you know, uh, interrupt our uh, um, good times we are having because it's not easy to, to raise a child. But in Bible times, having a child, having a son was really important. And we find a lot of parents praying to have children. And in this case, the Lord revealed to this family that they were going to have a son. And not any kind of son. He was going to have a purpose from his childhood, from his birth. So the parents, being concerned about this wonderful work, they said, what should we do, Lord? How can we get ready to take care of this baby. And um, the Lord gave them instructions, not, as, not only as far as the education of the child is concerned, but also how the parents should behave so that their uh, influence, even before the child was born, would not be negative. Because the way the parents are, especially the mother, is going to influence the son or the daughter um, that is going to be born. So it is important for us to understand that as parents we need to get ready. We we do not have we should not be taken by surprise. And then when we have the child in our arms, ask the Lord, Lord, what do you want me to do with this thing? You know, not after we have the child, but before we have a child, God has specific instructions for us. So the child would fulfill his or her potential, his or her purpose. It is important for us to remember this. So we studied about these two examples of young people who are born in favorable circumstances so that God's purpose would be fulfilled in their lives. And I would like us to address the question that many young people have, which is, why 
was I born in unfavorable circumstances? Or they simply say, you know, I understand, Pastor, what you are saying. I know I have a purpose, but unfortunately, the situation I find myself in is not favorable for my growth, is not favorable for my spiritual fulfillment. It's not favorable for me to fulfill God's purpose in my life. So what do I do if I don't have these conditions? Well, we should not use it as an excuse anyway. I believe that no matter what circumstances we are in, God can turn our circumstances around so we can fulfill our purpose. In John chapter 9, verses 1 through 3, we read, And as Jesus passed by, he saw a man which was blind from his birth. And his disciples asked him, saying, Master, who did sin, this man or his parents, that he was born blind? Jesus answered, Neither has this man sinned, nor his parents, but that the works of God should be made manifest in him. Now, this is a very important story because this man is actually born blind. Would you consider this a favorable or unfavorable condition for God's purpose to be fulfilled in him? Well, according to what we read in the verses, the disciples of Jesus thought that this man had sinned or the parents had sinned so greatly and that this man was punished for his parents' mistakes. So the disciples immediately saw a man who had been born with a problem. So they asked Jesus, does this man have a problem because of his parents or because of him? And Jesus said, none of them is at fault. This man was born so that the glory of God would be manifested in his life. So in other words, this man was born blind with a purpose. Or at least... God wanted to make everything so that the sickness of this man would turn out to be a tool used for the salvation of many. But what I understood from the verse is that he was born blind, so God's glory may be manifested in his life. The disciples saw a man with a problem, Jesus saw a man who had been born with a purpose. And this is very interesting for me because I, I wouldn't wish anybody to be born in that situation. But from the story, I understand that the man was, was really happy that he could be a tool to the honor and glory of God. Jesus saw a man who had been born with a purpose to the honor and glory of God. Jesus and the disciples were looking at the same person, but from these different perspectives. And many times we are looking at our own situation or we are looking at the situation of others and we think, you know, poor man or poor uh, lady, you know, they were born in a, this such a bad situation but you never know what God's purpose is for this person, how they, through their healing, through their transformation, can be of help for somebody else. You know, like in my experience, I don't believe God wanted me to go through so much trouble. And this is why he appealed to my heart when I was six years old. He wanted me to fulfill my purpose when I was six, but I refused to. So he waited and waited and knocked at the door of my heart many times in my life. And then I decided to follow him. 
and I decided to follow the purpose he has for me. So in the case of the blind man, he was not born in favorable circumstances, but he did not use that as an excuse. He still went out and he was there when Jesus passed by and he asked for help and he received the help he needed. He wanted to fulfill his purpose in this life. And his purpose was that God's works may be manifested in him. What do we see in our own life? Do we see somebody with a lot of problems? Well, I saw myself with a lot of problems. You know, I was thinking, I was, I was meditating what my life was going to be like if I continued on this path. Do you see a person with a problem when you look at yourself or you see somebody with a purpose, even in the problem you are having, that problem, experiencing a transformation, a change can be used for good, could be used so you can share your own experience with others and bring others to Jesus. You know, before I knew how to explain the Bible to somebody else, all I had was my own, my personal experience. So God is not asking you to preach doctrines if you don't know them, but he wants you to share what God has done for you. You can say today, you may say today, Pastor, I have a big problem. I have big problems. It's not easy for me to fulfill my purpose. God wants you to know today that you do have a problem. But greater than your problem is the purpose he has for you. Your purpose is always greater than your problems. Your problems are temporary, but your objective, your purpose in life is eternal. But you might say, I still look at myself and I only see problems. The truth is, God has made you with a purpose. And please, do not allow your problems to define your life. But actually, let the purpose that God has for you define your life. We have another example of a person who was not born in favorable circumstances. In Mark chapter 5, verses 1 through 3, we read, And they came over unto the other side of the sea, into the country of the Gadarenes, and when he was come out of the ship, immediately there met him out of the tombs a man with an unclean spirit, who had his dwelling among the tombs. And no man could bind him, no, not even with chains. So there was this man who was living in tombs. He was scaring everybody away. Nobody could pass by because he was running after them. And Jesus was very tired after a, a night of hard work on the sea. He came. The disciples probably thought, wow, well, this is our time to rest now. And immediately somebody comes out of the tombs running at them. The disciples probably took off scared, but Jesus stood still as the man was approaching. And in Mark 5, 4 through 5, we find a more thorough description of the situation of this man. It says, because he had been often bound with fetters and chains, and the chains had been plucked asunder by him, and the fetters broken in pieces, neither could any man tame him. And always night and day, he was in the mountains and in the tombs, crying and cutting himself with stones. Now, the situation of this young man is not an easy one. He was possessed by a legion of demons. 
he was doing harm to himself and he was doing harm to others. People were scared of him. I imagine his situation was really bad in his eyes and in the eyes of many. Anybody looking at him would not consider him having a purpose in life. But he did have a purpose. He just grew up in an environment which was unfavorable to the development of God's plans in his life and the purpose of God for him. So he was running around. He was living in tombs. He, he seemed to not have a purpose until the day he met Jesus. He went running to Jesus and Jesus stood still and started conversing with him. And Jesus realized that the man had come to him to ask for healing. But because he was possessed, somebody else talked in, instead of him. Satan talked and said, I have nothing to do with you, Jesus. And Jesus said, Who are you? And the, we know the conversation very well. I just know this. Jesus Christ answered the unspoken prayer, not the spoken one. Because the spoken one was, I have nothing to do with you. The unspoken prayer was, Jesus, set me free. And so Jesus answered the prayer of the heart. Set the man free. And now the man joyfully said, now I have a purpose. My purpose is to be with Jesus. So he went into the boat, or he wanted to step into the boat to follow Jesus wherever he went. And Jesus said to him, no. The Bible says, Jesus prohibited him. When I first read this verse, I was really sad because I had read so many verses about Jesus calling people to follow him. And suddenly somebody wants to follow him and he says, no. And then I, I understand that actually what Jesus was saying is, you do not need to be with me. What Jesus said probably was, what you need is for me to be with you. Go, go back to your home, go back to your town and tell people what the Lord has done for you and how he had mercy on you. On you. That was his purpose. He was supposed to be a missionary all along, but he was born in circumstances that, that were unfavorable to his growth, unfavorable to his calling by God. So now God revealed his purpose with the man, and he said, you go back and preach the gospel. And for him, the gospel was limited to what the Lord had done for him and how he had had mercy on him. So the Bible record says in Mark 5.20, And he departed and began to publish in the Decapolis how great things Jesus had done for him. And all men did marvel. They probably marveled before he even said anything because they saw the transformation the man had gone through. Because he had met Jesus. Isn't this wonderful? So today I'm here to tell you, I'm here to share with you my experience. I'm here to let you know that it doesn't matter what circumstances you are born in. God has a purpose for you. God has a purpose for your life. And you have to find that purpose today. Because today is the day of salvation. Today is the day when God is calling you to fulfill your purpose in your life. Don't wait any longer. God is here and he has a promise for you. And the promise is found in Jeremiah chapter 29 verse 11. For I know the thoughts that I think towards you, says the Lord. Thoughts of peace and not of evil to give you an expected end. In other translations, 
this is understood as being said like this to give you a hope to give you a uh, a future with a purpose this is what god is promising us today he says i know the thoughts i have for you thoughts of peace and not of evil to give you a future with a purpose do you want to accept god's purpose in your life today i pray that you would and i pray that today because today is the day of salvation you would walk in his steps find your purpose follow it wholeheartedly and at the end of the day you are going to be happy you are going to make others happy and you are going to spend eternity with jesus and with those who have been saved thanks to the fact that you followed your purpose may the lord bless you young man and young lady may the lord help you understand your calling follow it wholeheartedly fulfill god's purpose in your life so you and others could be happy amen let us bow our knees in prayer our gracious loving father in heaven we're so thankful to you that you've given us this opportunity to come apart and think about heavenly things we're thankful to you that you care for each one of us, that you loved us so much that you gave Jesus to come into this world. Help each one of us that are here today that we may examine our hearts and that we may want to be so much like Jesus so we can spend eternity following the Lamb wherever he goes. Lord, there's some among us here today that haven't given their heart to you. May your Holy Spirit wrestle with them. Help them to understand their need right now so that all of us can surrender our hearts fully to you and that we can be prepared for eternity. There may be some among us that are confused in their lives. Help them to see Jesus in a way they haven't seen before. And help us as a people to prepare for your soon coming and to hasten that day so that soon we can see Jesus again is our prayer in the worthy name of our Savior. Amen.
Thank you for spending the time with us. I hope that the message has helped you find your purpose for this present time. We'd also like to thank the Lord for using Brother Adrian Finaro to present this wonderful message. And I hope and pray that God will continue to bless him in his ministry. I would like to take this moment to invite you to our third presentation, which will take place this afternoon. It has been prepared by many youth from around the world. And Brother Isaac Terceros will be giving us a short presentation under the topic, You Have a Talent, Use It Today. I hope to see you there. Until then, God bless.